Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories and today's topic is People who are older on Reddit, what happens between 29 and 37? This is gonna sound bonkers, but it depends. For many people their career hits the ground and ramps up a lot during those years. What I don't like about this is that they ask you adults, plus 30, about your life and your answers are about work and career, which is completely understandable but damn I don't want to end up like up, which is inevitable. We're older? Oh dear. I guess we realize we're older. You visit Reddit threads to hear wise words of wisdom from so-called older Redditors and then get a very uncomfortable, strange feeling as you realize you are the older Redditor. I also ran into a delayed soreness. When I was younger, physical stress resulted in muscle soreness the following day. For some reason somewhere in my 40s that moved to the second day. I very specifically remember waking up the day after a physical day and thinking wow, I don't feel sore at all. Then the next day ow. Ow. Ow woof woof. I'll just lie still forever now, okay. I guess the big highlights for me were having a baby, getting cancer, and discovering my real passion in life. Then it all came crashing down one day when I realized I am older than what someone considers an older Redditor to be. I'm 42 now. Honestly, 29 to 37 is awesome. You're an adult and get to do adult things but you're probably past most of the drama and bullshit of your 20s and not too creaky and saddled with responsibility yet. I used to be able to get blackout drunk on a weeknight, pass out on my living room floor at 3 a.m., get up at 7 and go to work and be 100% fine. I know this because I did it all the time for years. Now if I drink I can't have anything going on before noon the next day because there is a 50% chance I will be wrecked for the next two days. So I guess I'm way healthier now but I can't take 100% of the credit. Had a long-term partner, but no kids yet. It was adult playtime all the time. Trips. Parties. Snuggle. Long-term romantic planning for how we'd grow old together. A few times work was intrusive with excess hours, but even those were many triumphs of accomplishments. Being healthy and active was fun. This was exactly it, until I turned 33. A month later my partner died suddenly. Now I'm 35, and it feels a lot like I've spent the last two years with a gunshot wound to the head. I've traveled more than ever before, taken up new hobbies, moved cities, gotten a big promotion, had other lovers, but it is all just an attempt to keep moving. If I stop, I remember he's gone. If I stop, I remember that nowhere is home. So I put on my human suit, and I do human things. You start coming around to the fact that old is actually going to happen it starts to feel like it might be too late to make certain things in life happen, at least in the way you might have imagined. People become a little less apt to try and change you, which saves a lot of BS but is a double-edged sword if you need improvement in something, since they'll be more apt to just figure if you're not there you'll never get there. Not taking care of yourself starts to hurt more and eating starts to have consequences. Late in that window if you're the sort that looks older than he is, you start getting a second wave of interest from college-aged women. You know it's funny. I'm 29, Zoomers all call me old for some reason, everyone else says I might as well be 20 for how old I actually am to any of them. The other day I was stressed out at work and I said the phrase I'm getting too old for this shit. My 60 year old co-worker immediately jumped in with don't be in a rush, you're a fucking baby. He had a point, I guess. But it sure as hell don't feel that way. Three things. Your teeth. All of a sudden you need a root canal. If you work sitting down, all of a sudden your butt is flatter. You go through contortions because of a desire slash idealization of your family slash kids. By 40 you figured that stuff out and are much freer. 50 is even better. Edit someone said sex. Yes. As a woman, and a pretty darn frisky one, I've never been hornier than I was at 30. 
All your friends get married, buy houses, and have kids. You are judged more for your lack of not having a so or kids like they are some type of developmental milestone for being happy. In 29 there was a stock market crash and right up to 37 a worldwide depression got worse and worse. There was a terrible drought right across the Midwest as well. Oh, and Germany, Italy, and Japan all became warmongers. It's a pretty good time. You've probably got your stuff figured out and are settling into adulthood. Enjoy it. You'll be over the dumb crap from your 20s, have money to do stuff you want to do, and still be young enough to have fun. One night you go out for drinks with friends. You don't drink to excess. The next day you have the worst hangover of your life. Every time you drink now you feel like shit the next day. If you do drink to excess the hangover might last two days. Depends. How's your diet and exercise? What's your career setup? Did you marry the right person? Do you have kids? How's your mental slash spiritual health? Then what's going on politically, economically, and finally how well set up is your family slash friend base? Life can be tremendously sweet as you get older, or be unbearably sh asterisk tty depending on your choices, your luck, your history. And at 37, you're not even statistically halfway through your earth trip. You first start, and then stop stressing about immediate future. You stop making long-term plans. You realize life is just as good, if not better, without alcohol and drugs. The hangovers become a bitch. You stop looking for new friends and stick to the ones that were there the whole time. In a nutshell, you slow down and really start enjoying and appreciating life. Your body goes through what I call second puberty your body starts to change. No one tells you this happens. Your diet needs to change, your body processes food a little differently. Not too much yet, but enough. Taste buds can change which is weird. Your priorities shift. You identify more with the older people in TV and movies, vs the teens and 20-somethings. Your sense of humor can change, with your lifestyle, experiences, and the people you now socialize. Your activity levels change. How you interact with your friends shifts as your life does. Younger people look at you like mentors, like you have any clue what you are doing, you don't, and slash or like you are old and out of touch. Your back hurts. Your knees hurt. You get stiffness more often, and headaches. Your doctor and yourself need to add things to your regular testing, exams, and routine. You can throw your back out, tying your shoes. Generally, you decide if you want kids, to get married, settle down, and it feels a bit more intense if you haven't yet. Particularly children if you are a woman, due to age bringing on difficulties, that range, geez. So much happens in that time. I could list all day. On the positive side, you start to feel more comfortable in your own skin and your FOMO goes down. Most of your friends settle down and start families so your need to compete with them socially declines too. On the negative side, you start to feel physical changes. Soreness doesn't disappear as quickly as it once did. You get tired more quickly. You might get depressed about working every day. On the whole, 29 to 37 is still a pretty good time. I've always thought that the optimum age is 35. You're still young enough to be physically active without too much fear of injury and you can still have your looks, but you're old enough to make decisions maturely and be more comfortable with your life. Now, let's talk about 49 to 57, oi. Turning 31 in a few months and honestly I think the main thing I've noticed is how important having just a handful of good friends and family can be. I had a lot of acquaintances and very few quality friends. After deleted most of my social media short of Reddit I found that self-betterment and reflection have really made me appreciate the small things. TLDR, quality over quantity when it comes to who you share your life with, and always work on yourself. Those were some of the best years of my life. Old enough to have my shit together, have a good job, etc., 
but also young enough that I felt really good. I'm in my 40s now, and I notice achy knees, occasional herniated discs in my back, and it is more difficult to keep weight off. At 27 I started feeling mortal so one acts in accordance and is more careful to the point of not being as much of a daredevil as you used to be. I'm 46. Your teeth start falling apart, if you didn't take great care of them younger. In your 30s, I'm serious when I say that you can notice the first signs of a tooth problem, and it can escalate to a broken or missing tooth in a matter of weeks. A few months ago, I went from cavity broken tooth tooth 90% missing, all within two weeks. I wish I took better care of my teeth in my teens and 20s. I actually turned 37 today. What happened between 29 and 37 well I got divorced and have been alone ever since. But I graduated nursing school last Friday so I guess there's that. Still alone though. I don't know if it's been said on here already, but I get sad when I realize the window of opportunity has closed on a lot of things. When I was a kid I wanted to be a professional athlete, and then when I was older I wanted to be a professional musician, and then a writer. At some point I wanted to make money and stop doing the starving artist thing which is a lot less cool than it sounds and I lost track of time. The years just flew by. Now I see professional athletes on TV who are 10 to 15 years younger than me. Musicians are the same. The roles you used looked up to and idolized the things you wanted to be when you were young are filled by what look to be kids in your eyes. You realize one day that you will never, ever, ever get to be those things. I don't think about it all the time, but when I do it just makes me sad. Parts of your body start to pop that you were unaware could pop to begin with. Hairs start to fall out or turn gray, gray in my personal experience. Luckily people seem to like the look and when it fully happens, I can dye it whatever color I feel like doing and have some fun with JT. Well for me, I was living on a sailboat at 29. Pretty much just cruising around Cuba, Caymans, Jamaica, Bahamas. At 31 I went and restarted my career. Lived in the country which was great but my commute was really long. At 34 my wife became abusive and we got divorced. I also had a nervous breakdown. By 37 I had stabilized well and had a good med combo and I liked my job and where I lived. Had a groovy girlfriend, life was back on track. A older friend told me this and it always stuck and now that I'm this age it's kinda true. 40 is the end of your youth and 50 is the start of your old age. Between 29 and 37 you just kinda live life 40 to 50 you slow down and I'm guessing here but I guess 50 on is a downhill slide. 35. 35 hit me like a fucking truck. And I physically changed, my jaw grew wider and people stopped asking me for ID to buy lotto tickets. More aches but also felt a bit stronger. That's when I actually became an adult, physically and mentally, I realized. It was like second puberty. You start to do lots of things. Some you want to, some you don't. The important thing is that you can't, under any circumstances, stop doing things, or everything will go off the rails, because it's all up to you now. Every decision, every day. If you don't make it happen, it doesn't fucking happen. Few items in no particular order. You start to care less about what people think. You don't recover as quickly from a night out. You invest in big expenses if possible, wedding, new car, house. You may develop weird digestive problems, lactose intolerance, indigestion. You realize that few good friends is better than many acquaintances. If you haven't already come to recognize that your parents had parents, who had parents, and so on, then you will generally come to terms with this fact somewhere during this time. Accepting cases of monstrous violence that is often multi-generational, if you refuse to do so or cannot come to terms with the mere humanity of your parents, you will deny yourself a some share of meaningful wisdom. Among other things, this means you have less insight to offer to the broadest number of peoples. And at the very least, you undermine your own tranquilly, 
which is very much a finite resource when you are old enough to keep losing time with the people you love. Besides, who has time to listen to some mother jumper with bad knees and reading glasses piss and moan about mama this and daddy that? Not the friends who ain't gonna be picking up the phone. As someone who is currently approaching that fourth decade of life, I recently asked this of some people and they all basically said, you find yourself short on time and having to pick between different priorities based on your goals. If you have kids your life becomes much more tied to your family unit and way less tied to your friendships. Even if you don't have kids, maintaining friendships becomes much harder because you're likely moving up in your career and, even if you're not moving up professionally or having children, your friends almost certainly are and everyone's responsibilities become enlarged. I recently listened to an NPR Invisibilia podcast titled something like How to Make Friends, I know, I know, and they referred to your 30s as the dark ages of friendship for this reason. Your body changes too, men go bald and gain bellies, women lose hair, gain fat, skin sags etc. If you're single apparently you feel the pressure to couple up unlike ever before. Everyone says I should really get into a physical routine. Alcohol hits you like a brick the next day even if you only slightly overdo it the night before. Unless you are intentional about friendships they're probably going to slowly drift away. At the same time, everyone said they felt much more stable in their 30s. So, stable and lonely, fun. You move to a new city. Then you fall into a job after having paid for four years of school that did not require the school at all. Find out that living in the city sucks, I grew up in the country. Move into an expensive ass apartment. Then start the 8 to 5 slog that is Monday Friday and find out that you'll never make enough money to live the life you wanted. You only look forward to the weekends because it's not work. And the evenings because you get to have a beer. Moral of the story? Find a job you can tolerate, but that more importantly pays you a respectable wage that allow you to do the things you want to do. Boof. 29 to 37. Stop binge drinking. Spent every afternoon and evening blackout prior to stopping. Met the woman that is now my wife, and along with her, adopted her daughter. We had another little girl that is now seven. I went from working a literal 80 to 100 hours a week to starting a damn successful business with my wife. We bought a house in the mountains. And now I'm sitting on my couch with my dog on Reddit 29 to 37 is a wild fucking ride. You begin to realize that you can't eat or drink anything and everything and be okay by the next day. Your skin begins to change and some people start getting a few gray hairs. You are busy busy. Between work and family and responsibility for a house and a car or two as well as trying to play your sport on the weekend or ride bikes early in the morning. You are fucking busy. And then one day, you wake up and think, what am I doing? It's a time when some people get divorced. It's a time when people reevaluate their life goals and the work they are doing. You realize that you are no longer the fastest and best soccer player on the field. Man, so much. At least for me. Didn't really start hitting any real stride until 27. 31 year old me is, almost, nothing like 20 year old me, and at least for me way better. It's weird how much different life can get after a decade of being an adult and finding yourself. 21 year old me. Shy, introverted, socially anxious and awkward. I only had one friend who was my boyfriend I met online. He lived 40 minutes away in a different suburbia. We were both hopeless romantics. He was the only other person I knew other than me who was gay. Played video games all the time, but also had passionate dreams of being a game developer so did plenty of projects on the side too. I enjoyed the long mornings and nights just working on projects. An exciting day out would be to drive to the next town over, which honestly had nothing much going on over my town. Lived in the Midwest so most of my day in and day out year after year at this point was the same trees, the same flat earth, the same farms, the same Walmarts, etc. Everything was very simple, mediocre, and the same. Broke college kid, 
but very money conscious. So I paid dirt cheap rent in an okay apartment, worked two part-time jobs, took part-time hours in uni managed to save for big luxury expenses like $300 for a new video card, and ate out once a week. Generally overweight but not grossly so. Nothing much happened in my life at all, and nothing to really push me hard. I was coasting along, which wasn't bad. I wasn't struggling or unhappy, but not ever truly living and I didn't really understand myself or understood how much different life could actually be. I honestly still felt like I was an awkward puberty 13 year old me, just one that could now legally drink. 31 year old me. Socially confident, feel like I have a solid identity now instead of just feeling like 13 year old me in an older body. Apparently I have a good sense of humor and am funny to be around. Less afraid to speak my mind. A strong circle of friends who are like family to me, sometimes it feels like I live in a sitcom. Broke up with my hopeless romantic partner, but we're still very close friends, almost like brothers to each other. It may be harder to make friends when you're no longer in school and forced to by proxy, but the friends you do make are more real. People know who they are better, and know what kind of other people they jive with better. You stop being friends with people just because you can, and start only spending energy on relationships that actually ignite you. Have a wonderful partner now who is yang to my yin, smiley face. He's the first person I would say I've truly fallen in love with, but love isn't anything like what I thought it was in my 20s. It's less passion, less fire, more like a steady, warm hearth. It's the feeling you've been through thick and thin with them and the security that comes with that. He's not very outwardly romantic and I don't idolize romance anymore, but yet we still manage to find romance in our lives in surprising ways. It's special, subtle, and unassuming. Had life-changing experiences I never imagine I would have been lucky enough to have. I've met the double rainbow guy at a crazy baller house party, tried half the alphabet of fun substances and been in a few orgies, among many other things, winky face. Live in an amazing area that is full of so much life, so many things to do, and so much nature. I never realized just the simple act of being able to look out the window and see mountains adds to my daily happiness. At least 1-2% to of my general life satisfaction is just from those mountains. Actually visited a bunch of bucket list national parks. Saw the Milky Way in full glory. I actually have money to do stuff and travel. Going grocery shopping is no longer a calculated game, I honestly enjoyed that though. In when I was 29 I visited another country overseas for the first time, it was magical. When 27, just short of your age range, I met some of my game dev idols at a game conference. As inspiring of a time as it was, ultimately the experience convinced me that my dream of being a dev wasn't to be. It made me rethink the concept of a career and where it belongs in my life. Ultimately, our work isn't the end all be all to who we are like I felt in my early 20s. Now I do something completely unrelated, but makes a decent middle class wage and I do work I find satisfying. That's one of the big lessons for me, it's okay if the job isn't glamorous, as long as you do something you can take pride in and feel good about what your results. I no longer see my career as tied to my core identity. Health problems all of a sudden. The moment I turned 30 everything I subjected my body to in my 20s, and didn't subject my body to, caught up with me. 7 cavities, a dental implant, stomach IBS issues, energy issues, you name it. I went from having zero problems to suddenly lots of small problems. Take care of yourselves. I'm a lot fitter and actually see myself as physically attractive. Alcohol completely wrecks me the next day, yet at the same time I can down two cocktails and only just be lightly buzzed. Everything just has longer last impacts on my health slash well-being in general. If something throws me off for any reason it isn't something I immediately bounce back from, I usually feel it the next day or feel a need to take care of myself the next day too. This applies to not just stuff like booze but also mental health. Good news is I've gotten pretty good at it. For me, 
life going into my 30s has been way better than my 20s and I'm excited where the next decade takes me. Part of it is me learning to not being afraid to get out of my comfort zone more and take risks, part having more disposable income to actually do things, part me having figured myself out more and not wasting time plus energy with people I don't sync with, among a lot of other things. Time becomes more important than money. You now understand why someone would pay $500 over MSRP for a gaming console. Money becomes abundant, a $1,000 repair bill is more a mild inconvenience than an impossibility. You buy a house, start a family, maybe a couple pets. Your circle of friends is now 50% people that live with you, 30% animals, 10% co-workers, and 10% actual friends. Waking up at 5.30 a.m. on a Saturday becomes normal, no alarm needed, getting tired 9 p.m. is also the norm. There's a sliver of time between 5.30 a.m. and when the rest of the family wakes up that you have to yourself. Maybe fire up the PlayStation or Xbox and relieve your youth but it's never the same. You lurk around on Reddit looking for a thought-provoking topic until you find one. You jump to the comment section only to be bombarded by the opinions of morons. The GOP folks are saying to nuke Iran as if we're playing a video game with no consequences. The Dems are talking about making everything free for everyone because fuck it we can print more money, right? You realize the best thing that you can do is to teach those that come after. But no one is interested in what you're selling. Like selling sand in a desert. Days, weeks, months fly by in a blink each one as forgettable as the last. Maybe I'll buy a Corvette, I'm almost 37 now, why not? I speak as a dude in about the middle of the range you provided. I put my head down during my 20s and put in hours at work, but still also put in the hours to maintain friendships and also kept up my physical activities. I also kept my spending pretty conservative, but also was happy to spend occasionally. This time of life is awesome. All the hard work during the 20s is paying off in the form of a flourishing career, disposable income that you can use in your social life, and a body that is still in its prime, if you've been maintaining it. Dating has also been pretty great. I do see some of my friends who either one, haven't set themselves up as well or two, haven't learned how to enjoy the fruit of their labor. For them, this time of life is a little confusing and their quarter slash midlife crisis is about to hit. Edit, I also disagree that your circle inevitably becomes small. If you put in the work to maintain relationships, you can have a solid group of 5 to 10 close friends. Your career kind of takes off. Maybe you're starting a family or your family is already entrenched. For me I met my wife right around 31 and didn't start having kids until almost 37. Personally I started finding my physical limitations were narrowing and my mental health, which was always well intact, started to take a beating, dealing with health, death of parents, being less social, putting family's needs first, etc. Now, with that last few sentences said, the only reason my 30 to 40 decade may not be the best decade ever is because I lost my parents at 30 and it left a much larger mark than I could have imagined. I took more control of my health, went to therapy, got on meds for my mental health, had two awesome kids whom I'm obsessed with, and while my marriage had some rough spots, towards the end of that decade I feel like we really started hitting our stride. I got priorities straightened out, stopped working so much so I could spend time with my kids. In general, I feel like the pieces of the puzzle started getting easier to piece together. After 35, being female, things slowed down. I also started having back problems and listened to all my friends talk about struggles of marriage and kids that I can't relate to. Now at 37, I thank the stars I didn't try to force having kids, a mortgage, or marriage. A lot went down between 30 and 35 including most of my family dying, even my older sister. Mortality really hangs on my shoulders, but I feel I'm more free than my friends. So I got my first puppy and life's been incredible since. He helps me push through those times of feeling I didn't do life right. 
I did right by him and he's showed me the career, the stuff, and the American perception of where I should be doesn't matter. As long as I do right by pup, I'm on a good path. Things start to betray you. Your body, not terribly, but you just don't bounce back as quick. Never really had a hangover till after 30. Soaking my feet or icing my knees used to seem like it would help, but I might have passed on doing it. Now I know if I sit with something too long it will bite me in the ass eventually. I started noticing just how much things had changed around me. Between changing tastes and places closing I ended up rearranging my whole social life. I'm more purposeful about doing things and trying to see certain people. Realized I had to be active in my family in a different way. I used to just wait till a holiday and go to my grandmother's house and everyone would file through. Now I realize her main efforts were literally keeping her family connected. Siblings that didn't really get along would still come see their mother. Now there is no one person to see. I noticed my mother seems less mature. Like she doesn't want to cook and would rather eat out and I find myself saying, there's food at the house. She used to call me to see if I was alive. Now I'm checking to see if she ate breakfast yet, cause she needs to take her pills with food. I started noticing just how much I wasn't the main marketing target and they were trying to sell me things that were responsible, or based in nostalgia. I realized my favorite era of music is gone and that a significant portion of things are truly foreign to me. I worked with children and young people so I was privy to stuff, but most of what was popular didn't interest me. I settled into certain things. If it's hard liquor I mostly just want scotch or whiskey. I still like to try different beers, but I know what all the major alcohol groups do to me now and outside of a party that has a long weekend after it I dance with who brung me. My tolerance for things I don't like is much lower and my indulgence for my interests increased. My time is my time so you better plan ahead with me or at least give a heads up. This marks the end of the video. If you liked my contact, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.